other side must be barred. What are you doing in this dungeon? I devote myself to solitary prayer, to confession and fasting. I have broken the lock. You can leave. But I choose to live this way. I am an anchoress. This is my entire life. Sealed up here. All day and night for life. It is an odd way to worship. I am at complete peace with the world. Can you say as much? I live a life of violence, but I accept my place in the world. A curious response. For the meek shall inherit the earth. I shall pray for you. Now, if you'll forgive me, I pay my penance within these walls, never to see light of sun again. A sinner am I. The joys of life I have to save her. In solitude, forever enclosed, I forswear all earthly pleasures. You continue to pray? Yes, for mercy and peace. How can you be at peace with the world if you live beyond its reach? I know the pain it can inflict. Come outside. Your guard won't be angry for just a few moments. Come. Come. I will follow you. If only to feel the grass beneath my feet, I will repent when I return. I came here after the dark times, pestilence and hunger, the death of my father. It has been years. I wonder what it will be like to once again feel a cool breeze, a warm sun, the scent of black. Ah, oh, the world! It is so beautiful. The Earth's beauty renews us. Thank you, stranger. My life begins anew. Sure. We are <laughs> guest who wants a meal is silent. He listens and looks about. So must a wise man be. 
searches within himself.
foul team. Blocked from the other side. Not even weep. Why the cursing, Vikinger? These are the funeral embers of the last of my raiding crew. One by one, they have fallen. It is a heavy loss. There is more. Just days ago, news from Norway tells me my family has been taken by the plague. All of them. All! Viking. My wife, my children, all my pretty ones. It is too much. You must grieve for your loss, friend. I cannot weep. As a raider, I taught myself not to. Could you... Could you give me leave to weep? What do you mean? You are a Vikinger, as am I. Perhaps if you gave me leave, I would water the earth with a storm of tears to soften the pain. Consider me your chieftain. Consider that I command you. Weep, Vikinger. Weep. It is no good. I cannot. I cannot. God. <laughs> What has happened? Dandelion Puff upset some kindling. <laughs> Bad girl. Everything burst into flames. I barely escaped. <laughs> Dandelion Puff. My echo doggy walkie. <laughs> She's still in the house. I rushed out, but she didn't follow me. <laughs> Dandelion? Uh, Dandy do! <coughs> <coughs>
mistress is this way, Dandelion. She's lucky to be alive. Friend, I soon will sleep in the comforting arms of the Lord. <laughs> Can you please look after my ickle doggy dog? Dandy is no dog. She is a fox. A fox? <laughs> How silly I've been. So that's why you love the forest so, eh, Dandy Buff? <laughs> but yes, I will find a place for her. Bless you. I die in peace. Goodbye, my dandy. Dandy, too. Dandy. I need a place for you to stay. Would you like to join my settlement? I found another anomaly. Is that what we're calling them? And another data packet. Should I get it? If it's anything like the last one, absolutely.
The mad one is away wandering in lands afar. He searches for a way to resurrect his son, asking every leaf and stone for answers. We can use this to our advantage. The seal of Sedent, the serum, and its catalyst. It should be ours for all the suffering he has wrought. Our minds are attuned to love as sympathetic strings. When the time is right, just right, we'll go. Are you two hearing the same voices I'm hearing? Not sure what you mean. It's all quiet on our end. Damn it. Well, I'm at the second packet. You ready? I'm ready. I got the data. Here it comes. And your wits, we will go a pillaging, we will. Well, a long way from home, Norseman. Uh, I may be, <laughs> but my sixty winters have not slaked my taste for raiding. And I have the finest crew on the sea. You have no crew. Do you not see them? Stout fellows all. And you, make yourself useful and help prepare the ship, friend. No end of preparations we must do. Start where you will. Look around you. There's no end of preparations we must do. Oh, yes! Bring all. We'll need to repair weapons and shields. But you have no blacksmith. Ah, nonsense. Blackbjorn is about somewhere. He's our man. Bring as many as you can. <laughs> Imagine the terror in our enemies' eyes when the hail of arrows falls from the blue. Blow the 
that damn horn! Oh, but... May the gods, will you? The battle horn is sounded! Men, make the blood rain fall in us! Wolves! Enemies! Battle is upon us, men! Let none survive our blood! Die, you miserable Saxons! That was. <laughs> You're lucky to still be alive. The crew fought like heroes. No Saxon survived, just like the old days. Friend, there was no crew. Only you and me. Your Saxons were but mangy wolves. No. Bjorn Scarred, they were all here, fighting at my side, <laughs> just as they did in the raids of yore. Gone now. Today you lit their shades on a ghost ship. Your raiding days are done. Your crew feasts in Valhalla. Well, can it, can it, can it be? Hmm. And if so, it was worth it. One last raid. Thank you, my friend. Has my fond husband calmed down yet? It's soon time to bring in the harvest. Too heavy. Having trouble, farmer. Rose? Is that you? It is. My daughter, my child! I can scarcely believe it. You are a little confused. I've been longing to speak to you again. I've never spoken to you before. Rose, Rose, do not jest with your father and his failing eyes. Um, very well. It is good to see you again. Such a pleasure to have you at my side, Rose. But I'm so tired, so very tired. I cannot move these crates to shelter. Yes, Rose, right there. You were always a very clever, child. Put the others there as well. Rose, you've grown up to be quite strong. That's the last of them. Come join me, Rose. It's been ages since we had a chat. White roses. Once we named you, it became your mother's favorite flower. The rose bush we planted by your mother's grave has grown all the way up the old oak tree. You remember? Just outside there. Rose, you're such a help. Let us reminisce, shall we? The tale of how I courted your mother. Why not? You never tire of that one. Well, as a young man, I was sent to a great lord to help with his livestock. That first day, I brought the cows in from the field, and there was this milkmaid. Her smile like sunshine in a storm. I fancied her. She fancied me. 
We found our way to a storeroom to make better acquaintance. Sleep well, old friend. And then? What? Oh, uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, what, what was I saying? Ah, your mother and I in the storeroom. Yes, uh, well, the Lord wandered in and caught us making merry. He fell into a dark rage and raised his axe, and me wearing nothing but a smile. Your mother had a quick wit. Why, master, she said, this boy can fetch you more milk than you'd ever have use for. Well, the Lord liked his milk, so says he, bring me this milk, and perhaps I'll show mercy. We threw in our smocks and ran for the cow pen, milked the cows in a frenzy, and carried back two buckets. The Lord spooned off some cream to taste. Satisfied, he had his servant set the milk in the shade, and declared more. In a thrice, master, your mother said, and we ran outside. How will we get more, I asked? The cows are spent. I must know what happened. <clears throat> yes? Oh. <clears throat> the cows are spent. Your mother bade me not to be a ninny. She led me in a circle back to the buckets in the shade. We'll bring him these again, and call them new. So we brought the master the same milk again. Again he was pleased. Again he asked for more. And again we circled around. Soon, the master had ten buckets by his count. So he gave us his blessing. We ran for the stables, stole a horse, and never looked back. Not long after, you were born. The pinkest little babe a father could hope for. We named you Rose. After the cow. That reminds me. Your mother's ring. She wanted you to have it. Here. I... I do not know what to say. You should keep it to remember, Mother. Such a sweet girl. I'll bequeath it to you when the time comes. I must go, Father. Take care. Such a delight to see you, Rose. Come back soon. See no one. My brother, he's right in there. A goblin turned him into a fish. A goblin turned him into a fish. He won't come out of the water to do his chores. Mom's gonna be so angry. Oh, whatever will I do? I gotta get him out of that pond. It won't be easy. He's mean and slippery. Lots of hungry fish here.
convinced at all that your brother is under a goblin's spell. Keep fishing! I've got treats for you, Walter. Worms and such. That's enough! Walter! Stay in the bushes! We've got all we need! We don't have them yet, you pudding head! Don't call me names! Pudding head! Pudding head! Your brother looks pretty healthy for fish. We thought it would be fun to get someone else to do the fishing for us. So you fooled me. And it worked! If you like, you could leave us the fish anyway. We'll swap them for brittle at the market. Walter, we got the fish! Thank you, stranger! <laughs> Look at you, face like a stuffed beaver. What quarrel have you with me? None. I am but an observer of your sparrow-like weakness, and I wish to make it known in verse. Flighting, then. You understand. I will take you on. Happy to bet. Let us begin on your work. I hope you're ready. Would you battle a dragon? Then challenge me not. Oh, you're barely an insect. A fly that I'll swat. Good! Keep it coming! I'm possessed of a strength that would scare off a bear. You're possessed of a baldness that scared off your hair. Great! I've the heart of a lion, the loins of a horse. The looks of a pig, and the voice of a goose. Oh no, that one won't do. Let me end now by saying, you think you're a beast. You declare you're the most, but I've found you're the least. Huh, sharp as an eagle's talons. You've earned your winnings today.